Hello. Okay, waiting for my spinning wheel to catch up. Happy Monday. I'm back from up north. <clears throat> all right, let's look here. I got to get all my pages set up just right so I can see all of your comments and see my live and make sure I've got everything set. Oh, I see people popping on. Ope is such a Wisconsin word. Of course, I would bring it out in the first two minutes of my live here. Um, let's see. My comments are not quite popping up yet. Let's see. Hopefully they start. Here we go. Okay, there they are. Hello, Jean and Carol and another Carol and Sharon. Welcome. Thanks for joining. So glad that you guys could join me this evening. I was fishing all last week and I'm back. And I was so excited to play with new products and get to stamping with you guys tonight. And I got to tell you, I have had a whirlwind of a Sunday and Monday getting back from vacation. I mean, it wasn't really fully a vacation because I was working remotely while I was up north for the first time ever. And it was wonderful and it was amazing. Um, but when I got back, oh, do I have a mountain of laundry? <laughs> and I got to getting laundry done and getting cat litter boxes taken care of and trying to get dinner planned for tonight. And I'm like, I have nothing planned for Make It Monday. Well, in my head, it's planned. It's totally planned in my head, but we're doing some stamping on the fly tonight because I've never made the card we're going to make tonight. I have an idea. I am seeing so many people from new places I haven't seen pop up before. Thank you so much for joining me. I just, I am always so thrilled when I see so many people saying hi and sharing where they're from. My favorite thing to do after a live is to go through and read everyone's comments and see where you are watching from. I absolutely love to do that. So thank you for saying hello. If you haven't said hello, please do so in the comments. Say hi, tell me where you're from. If you're new to my page, Welcome, I'm really glad you're here. My name is Rose Grunwald. I'm an independent demonstrator for Stampin' Up! And that's just a really long, fancy way of saying I'm like a creative coach. Super passionate about sharing creativity and stamping with people. I have found tons and tons of joy through stamping and I wanna share it with the world. So while you're saying hi, I would love it if you would share my video tonight. I'm gonna... Um, <clears throat> switch over the screen shortly and I have a hashtag that I would like you to put in your post when you share it hashtag country cards by Rose live and those who share using that hashtag that's how you're going to get entered to win the prize drawing so I'm super excited there are so many of you watching and saying hello I just can't say hello to everyone individually as you pop up but please know I so appreciate that you are watching Tonight we are playing with embossing powders. I've got a tip for storing your embossing powders where um, you don't need a different like Tupperware or kind of plastic container. I've got a technique I've been dying to try that I'm going to be trying for the first time with you guys tonight. And I'm playing with the new Hand Pend Petals Bundle which is one of my favorites from the new catalog, as well as the hand pen designer series paper. Last week, you might remember, we made this interlocking gatefold card. Opens up like this. Oops, I gotta close it the right way. This is the prize that I am giving away for likes and comments. And the winner of this, we're gonna jump right into prizes, is Kay Wurrer. I think that's how you say it, Kay. I'm sorry if I'm absolutely butchering your last name, but Kay is the winner for comments and likes. Thank you so much, Kay. I've got a prize claim form on my blog, www.rosegrunwald.com. Right at the top, you'll see a link that says prize claim form. If you would fill that out, that would be great. And for sharing, with the hashtag, make sure you're using that hashtag. The winner is Kim Crane, and Kim, you are winning 
this corner bouquet stamp set, which was from Celebration this year. So congratulations, ladies. All right, I just want to do a really quick reminder too before we start stamping. I've got some prizes piling up. I, I keep them for two weeks and then they go back in the prize bucket. So we've got some prizes from last week. Maureen Wheatley, if you're watching Maureen and Christine Brady O'Hearn, um, prizes from last week for you guys. So make sure you get that prize form filled out. What do you say, should we do some stamping? I'm super excited. Okay, let me flip this around. Let me get my water out of the way. Okay, you see down over here? Ooh, let's see how I can do that. That little hashtag, that's the hashtag you should be using when you share to be entered for the prize. Okay, so. I started to cut my layers and that's about as far as I got <laughs> with this idea in my head. I'm super excited that the catalog is finally live. You know, when I was live last week, the catalog hadn't gone live yet, so I couldn't open this puppy up, but now I can. And today we're using the hand penned suite. I've got a piece of the pretty designer series paper over here. You can see these really soft, beautiful colors. And um, I'm gonna coordinate it tonight with Highland Heather and some gorgeous grape. Now this is something new in our catalog. You might notice with a bundle. Let me see if I can um, zoom this in just a little bit so you can see this. Right across here, it tells you all the colors that coordinate with the designer series paper. And if you've ever noticed on your pack of designer series paper, it says it right here underneath the description. So um, that is how I usually pick out the colors that coordinate with the DSP for me to do my cards. That's a little tip for you. I was always looking and thinking, is this cinnamon cider or soft suede, right? Well, I don't have to guess anymore. It always tells you right on the back of your designer series paper. So it's super, super easy to coordinate your products. Okay, of course the hand penned petals bundle comes with all these beautiful stamps and coordinating dies. Here's what those look like. There are 15 stamps in the hand pen petals suite. This is a two step stamp and we're gonna be trying both um, tonight, we'll see how this goes. Um, and then actually, I don't know that we will, we might just do the one of them. Um, and then uh, there are a few fonts here, or sentiments that I love. I love the fonts. I really like these mixed like handwriting and solid fonts. So, all right. And I think, I'm not entirely sure yet, we'll see, but I think I'm also gonna use this painted texture 3D. So. Okay, I see tons of you using the hashtag in the comments. I so appreciate that. Make sure when you're sharing, you're putting that hashtag on your post that you're sharing. That's how I'm gonna see all of you that shared it. So, okay. We're gonna start out with a piece of Highland Heather for our card base. This is cut four and a quarter by 11. So this is a tall card and I've scored it here at five and a half. Let me zoom out just a little bit so you can get my whole, I feel like my, uh, I feel like this is a little bit crookedy. There we go, that's better. So when you're doing a tall card, you are absolutely gonna want to score your cards, you get a nice, um, you get a nice crisp fold. So the grain of the paper runs the long way. So when we're um, cutting a normal piece in half and we fold it this way, we're folding it with the grain. However, when we do a tall card, we're trying to fold it against the grain. And when you score it, that's gonna help to break up the grain of that paper a little bit to give you that nice crisp edge. 
Now I often get asked, am I supposed to fold on the side that bumps out or the side that's indented? You want the side that bumps out to be on the inside of your card. And then I like to use my bone folder to get a nice crisp fold. And you can see how when I set that down, it's not popping up or anything. It is a totally crisp, flat card. So for those of you looking for tips on um, folding and getting a good crisp fold on these tall cards, I hope that's really helpful for you. Okay, I've got a piece of gorgeous grape here as well. This piece is two and seven eighths by five and a half. It's just an eighth of an inch larger than this other piece of gorgeous grape, which is two and three quarters by five and a half. Um, this is a scrap of whisper, uh, whisper white, basic white that I found in my drawer. So we're gonna use that for our sentiment here. And I'm just gonna set that aside for now. Okay. I need to do a little bit of gluing and I really don't like a sticky mess. So whenever I'm doing gluing, I always like to bring out my silicone craft sheet. This thing is awesome. I use it for all of my gluing, but the cool thing is if you get glue on it, I, I don't have any here because it's already nice and clean. It just peels right off when it dries. So I just like that it keeps my space clean. I don't like sticky fingers and sticky paper and stuff sticking together. We're going to adhere our gorgeous grape back layer, um, our Highland Heather to the gorgeous grape layer, which is a little bit bigger. So I'm lining up the edges and just leaving a little bit of a border um, on the outside here. So technically this is gonna go this way. I'm lining up the top and the bottom and leaving a little border on the sides. Now we're gonna be die cutting right through this layer. So I need this to be really, really strong. So I'm gonna use my Stamp and Seal Plus. Most of you who watch me know that I always use my Stamp and Seal. I want a really, really super strong hold here. So the plus is coming out tonight. And you'll see I'm putting a lot of adhesive on here. I really don't want these layers to come apart at all as I'm gluing them down. Okay. Now, let me see. If you get it over the edge, that's okay. I always just kind of like to push that over with my thumb. Thank you so much for sharing everyone and watching. Okay, now I'm gonna do my best to line this up. There, that looks pretty straight. It was so weird to get into the swing of things today when I got back. Heading into work and just, oh my goodness. It was one of those hectic Mondays. Bonnie says the silicone sheet is the best thing. You know what? This is quickly becoming like my favorite tool, the silicone craft sheet. I really, really love it. Especially when I got my new desktop, remember? I didn't want to get that all sticky. Okay, now... I also am going to need a piece of designer series paper that's about an inch wide that's going to go here on the edge. So I am going to line up my layer here, straight top and bottom. And I'm going to leave about a half an inch to three quarters of an inch on the left hand side towards the outside of the card. Actually, yeah. And then once I have that all lined up and straight, I'm going to take a pencil and I am going to just draw a light line down my card front, just like this. Now I'm going to erase this later, but we have it here for now. Now our stamping comes in. I'm going to use my Versamark here. 
and we're going to do some heat embossing. So let me get my stuff already here. And I'm going to grab this big, I don't really know what this is. Maybe it's a peony. I'm not quite sure from the side, but here it is. And I'm going to melt this on my block. Now when I stamp this, let's see. <laughs> How am I going to do this? I will stamp it just like this. Yeah, that'll look nice. Okay. Okay. Just checking it out to make sure this is how I want to do this. And let me grab my... Joan says, hello. Hope I enjoyed my time fishing. You know what? It was wonderful. And it's not like the fish were hopping in the boat or anything like that. We caught a lot of fish, but it was so nice to hang out with my dad. Oh my gosh, it was so wonderful. I just absolutely loved it. Now, oh, you know what? I probably should get this stuff ready before I start inking things up. Okay, we're going to do heat embossing. And so usually I have this done ahead of time, but I don't tonight because I'm like not prepared. Um, we are going to use our white embossing powder and I've got a full one here and a partial and I just keep all of my embossing powder in a little like dollar store container. Um, we don't sell the embossing buddy anymore but I have one and so I still use it for embossing to keep the extra uh, powder off of my project. Now if you have a dryer sheet that might work but I like to rub that over first and get ready for my embossing. Hello Kelly, welcome. Hi Helen, I'm seeing some new names tonight. So happy that all of you could join me. Okay and I'm using my Versamark. This is kind of a big stamp so I'm making sure um, when I have a large stamp a lot of times it helps to ink up your stamp with the ink pad instead of the other way around. Make sure that's good and inked because I want a nice, crisp, solid image. So, all right, lining it up with the line. I could do this at an angle, but I'm gonna do this straight on. There we go. Okay. And now we are going to grab our white heat embossing. And what I do is I just pour it over my Versamark inked image. And then I just tap off the excess. And sometimes I like to go over it a couple of times to just make sure I have all of my image with powder, just like that. Okay, now you're wondering what the heck do I do with this powder? Well, I dump it back in my embossing container, just like this. And then I will stick them all back in my little dollar store bin. And then this is the only thing that I'm storing for my heat embossing powder. So some of you like to use a different container for each of your embossing powders. This is the way I do it. I really don't have a lot of extra space in my stamping studio here. So this is just what I found works the best way. Okay, we're gonna heat set this. Hopefully the noise isn't going to be too bad. I like to pre um, kind of preheat my embossing tool here before I start to blast it on my page. So that's what we're going to do. Just get that good and hot. And I'm watching right now 
for this powder to turn into kind of a liquidy shape. It'll sort of bubble up and then set. Just like that. For those who don't heat emboss, I have to tell you, it's like the most magical thing ever to see that embossing powder turn into this beautiful, beautiful liquid. Okay, now I'm gonna come back in with an eraser and I'm gonna wait till this is really, really set. And I'm just gonna erase this pencil line here on our card. Hi, Michelle, welcome. Okay, this is good and set, so. Just gonna go through and erase that line so it's not going through our image. And for this, I'm not using anything special. This is just a retractable eraser that I bought on Amazon somewhere. I don't even know the brand but it works good. Thanks for sharing, Michelle. Hi, Dorothy. You know, Dorothy, I am originally from central Wisconsin myself. I grew up in Wisconsin Rapids. So central Wisconsin holds a very special place in my heart. Okay, so we've got our card base with our a uh, heat embossed image on it. So now we are going to come in with our dies and I'm gonna line up with that faint line that I can see. I'm gonna line up this image or this layer just over the top. I want to make sure it's nice and straight, so like that. Okay, and I'm going to find the die cut piece that coordinates here with our image, which is this outline of our flower. And I'm going to line this up as if I were die cutting the whole thing. Let's see, now you have to be a little bit precise with this. Okay, just like that. And now I'm gonna just grab a couple post-its. You can use craft tape, um, works well for this too. And I'm gonna get that stuck down. into place so that it's not moving around on me. I really don't want this die to move. Okay, now let me grab my big boss here. Dorothy says, not far from the home of Tombstone Pizza. You're right about that. <clears throat> and I love me a good tombstone with, I really, really like the, um, Tombstone is my favorite deluxe pizza. Oh my gosh, my favorite for frozen pizza. And actually for any pizza. Tombstone's probably the only deluxe. Oh, Marcia says she's going up north this weekend to fish. Where do you go up north, Marcia? Um, I was just in Phillips, Wisconsin at my parents' cabin. Okay, I'm going to just uh, die cut this while I'm gabbing with you guys here. 
And I'm cheating a little bit because I'm using my old magnetic plate for this. Now, because we're die cutting through two pieces, I'm really going to make sure I go through a couple of times because I really want this to die cut well. And I hope, remember, I'm trying this for the first time, so fingers crossed that this worked out really well. And it looks like it's die cut all the way through. Let's see. It is. Okay, good. Good, good, good. Let's see this one. I don't know if we're going to need this or not. I'm just going to set this aside. Oh, Michelle has cousins in Phillips. We go to Woodruff. Oh, okay, I know right where Woodruff is because um, my husband and I, we just bought land last year in Bessemer Township, which is not very far from Manitowich Waters. So we go through Woodruff every time we go up there. Such a beautiful area. So Michelle has cousins in Phillips. Marsha goes to Woodruff. What a small world. Oh my goodness. Loving it. Okay, so we have this die cut piece. I'm going to give this away a little bit. But this is going to go right over the top of what we cut out, just like that. But we're gonna do a little bit more to this. Okay, we're gonna dress it up a little bit. Let's see. I kinda wanted to use an embossing folder to dress it up because I was a little nervous that maybe it wouldn't be quite blingy enough. So I thought my painted texture uh, 3D embossing folder might work well for this. So I'm going to line this up in here and get out my, okay, so on my plates, it's telling me I need one and four with a 3D embossing folder. Now, another tip for those of you new to using our cut and emboss machine, you always want to make sure that you are putting the crease or the fold, the, the seam or the edge, what would you call this? The spine. The spine of your embossing folder through first when you are putting it through because you want it, you don't want to go through this way because it'll put too much pressure on that spine and we don't want to break our embossing folder. So I always just go through spine first. Okay, let's see, how'd it turn out? Oh, I really like that. Not bad for stamping on the fly so far. I'm kind of liking how this is uh, turning out. Okay, next, I'm gonna grab my pattern paper. This is from the hand penned designer series paper. And I really love this paper so much. I had a hard time deciding what um, side I wanted to use, but I picked this purple stuff. So I'm going to cut off, I think I'm going to go this way because I like all the different variegations in the colors. I'm going to cut a piece that's an inch wide. So this doesn't use a lot of our designer series paper, just enough, and five and a half inches tall. like so. And I also want to do a little stamping on our sentiment, but let's start putting this together. Like so, like this. All right, so let's start 
assembling our card. Uh, Marsha, what do you like to go fishing for? I know you go up to Woodruff. <clears throat> we love walleye fishing, but you know, frankly, I really like anything that bites, to tell you the truth. Okay, using my seal to glue down this layer. And what I'm gonna do is glue this right tight to the edge of my card front. Just like this. So I'm just gluing down that strip. Like so. And now this layer that we die cut and we um, embossed with our embossing folder, I'm going to pop this up on dimensionals right over the top of the image. I don't want this going anywhere, so you all might be a little bit shocked at how many dimensionals I use but I really, really want a nice kind of firm layer. So I'm making sure to get these dimensionals in all the nooks and crannies here. And for those of you who watch me, I already have used a bunch of these edges. I know that you are shocked to see that, but I've been doing better. Oh, Marsha loves fishing for crappies. Um, I absolutely love fishing for crappies too. Okay, I might have gone a little bit overboard on the dimensionals now that I look at it. Um, my favorite thing for um, the fishing opener is to catch some crappies. And then the next morning, I love it when my mom fries up fresh fish for breakfast. I love it in like a light cornmeal type dusting batter. Okay, now we're going to very, very carefully line this up. So let's stick this down. I think we got it here. Yep, we do. And I love it with um, eggs. Absolutely love it with eggs and toast and fresh fish and hash browns. It's amazing. Okay, so we've got our layer here. Now on top of our die cut uh, our die cut layers on top of our embossed piece. What do you think of this? Isn't this cool? Totally highlights that image. Okay, now we got to put our sentiment on here. So I think I'm going to set that kind of over the top, like so. So let's get out our. I think I'm going to do this anything as possible, or I could do. A narrower piece. Let's see. Here's how I store all my scraps. I could do this really narrow. Oh, I think I like that better. And I'm just going to do congratulations. Oh, I'm seeing a lot of pretties and love this layout. Thank you, everyone. Okay, so let's grab our congratulations. Just very sweet and simple. And I will mount this. We'll find our Highland Heather here. Oh, Jackie likes the embossing folder. Yeah, you know what? I'm a little behind the eight ball here. I haven't put in my order because I've been fishing. I haven't put in my order from the new catalog. 
So I'm a little light on embossing folders right now, you guys. Okay, so put on this congratulations. And it is not straight at all. Look at that. That's why paper has two sides. So let's try this again. Well, that's better. Yeah, that looks good. Okay. So I think I'm going to put that here. And I'm just going to snip the edge of it. So, I don't know, like this. I'll stick that over the top. How does that look? You guys like it there? I don't think so. Okay. Now, I've been seeing this um, in the catalog lately, actually. I still have some of my twine from my snail mail combo pack. And plus, this is in our new um, Baker's Twine Essentials pack. There is all sorts of pretty colors in here. Nice neutrals. So what I'm going to do is tie this in a little bow. Ooh, Jean says graduation announcements are coming in. So congratulations is the perfect sentiment. You know what? You're right. And here's what's super cool about this. Um, you could find school colors and use our um, new, like all the new, these are the in color ones, but they have subtles and brights and Regals, and you could use these fun patterns um, that match the graduate school colors, and you could do that with the card. With this exact stamp set and layout. And it would work really awesome. Okay, I'm going to grab my glue dots here. And we are going to stick a glue dot on the back of this little twine sheet and I'm just gonna tuck this in kind of next to our leaves and trim off these edges of this bow and then I'll stick my Congratulations sentiment just over the top of it, like, like so. All right, so let me get some more dimensionals here. Where did I put it? Well, I was doing really good at using the edges and now I lost my dimensionals sheet. Okay, I have to start a fresh one. Okay, and I actually wanted the edges for this one. <laughs> oh, how funny. Uh, yeah, this is the side that's straight. Yep. Okay, so we'll do that and I need just a little like half a one down here. So let me grab the edge. Let me take a look where I want to put this right here. School colors would be Pacific Point and Daffodil Delight. You know what? Those are absolutely going to pop too. I love how I think of like colors now totally in terms of stamping up colors. You know, it's not royal blue and gold. It's Pacific Point and Daffodil Delight, right? I mean, 
Why would it be anything else? So since we've decided now that this could be a graduation card, what do you say we do the inside too? Um, our front says congratulations. And now let's bring in the inside layer. I'm going to do four by five and a quarter. And of course I cut this funny. I wasn't thinking about how I was doing it. No big deal. And let's grab our flower here. I'm going to clean off my Versamark from before and in some Highland Heather again. Grab this and I'm just going to uh, come in from the side. I'm going to leave the inside blank so that I can write a little note. The wedding season is really coming up soon too. So this would make a beautiful wedding card as well. Okay, I am going to get out my seal. For those of you who are struggling with your seal or your seal plus, try pushing a little less hard. I found it does really, really well when I don't press as hard on it. Okay, lining this up in the middle. Just like that. So now we have a pretty inside of our card, a pretty outside. We probably need some bling. What should we use? Well, I'm kind of, I really like these, but kind of over. Some of these colors I have here. Ooh, ooh, I love the new genial gems. Maybe those will look nice. Those come in this sweet. Let's try them. I think I'm liking these papaya ones. Oh, green would look nice too. Uh, do I have any? Mm -hmm. I thought I had some clear. What are these called? These are opal rounds. I've got some opal rounds. I will do those. Okay, so let's put some opal rounds in. I'll go here. And here, and one more down here. So there we go. Not too bad for my first try at a new technique. I love it when that stuff comes together. Of course, you could stall it up your flower and make it really um, shiny. But that turned out pretty nice, don't you think? Let me zoom in so you can get a good look. There we go. So there's our finished card. Hand penned, partial die cut. I think it turned out really, really great. Now, just a reminder, if you are liking these cards and my style of card making, I think you absolutely will love my color and contour class to go. Uh, you've only got about five days to sign up. So go to my uh, website, www.rosegrunewald.com and check on classes to go. And you will get details there. 
if you want my classes to go, the PDFs for free, now is a really great time to join because Stampin' Up's giving you like 30 extra bucks of product in the starter kit uh, just for the month of May. So um, instead of getting 125 of product for 99 bucks, you get $155 worth of product for 99 bucks. And that's a smoking hot deal. Yeah, it goes through May 31st. So don't miss out on either of those. And I hope that you will have a great rest of your rest of your evening, a great rest of your week. And I hope that you'll join me again right here. Five days of fabulous fun for the catalog kickoff. I'm starting it out with a BOGO sale Saturday. Um, to kick off the new catalog. So any of my projects, please let me know. I look forward to stamping with you again soon.